These are the frequently asked questions for pre-calculus for Appendix A1. I'm going to start here with number 23, and it says, in exercises 23 to 26, use the information from the grapher screens below to evaluate the expression. So what I'm doing is I'm first looking over the grapher screens to see what on earth they're doing. And I notice that this one is taking 1.5 to the third power, and we get 3.375. Raising 4.41 to the second power gives you 19.4481. Raising 1.3 to the second power gives you 1.69. And raising 2.1 to the fourth power gives you 19.4481. So I look at number 23, and it says I'm supposed to use that information to find the square root of 169. Well, here is 1.69, and how did they get that? Well, they got it from taking 1.3 and squaring it. So they're really asking you to do this. They're saying if you know that the square root of 1.69 equals 1.3 squared, can you tell us what the square root is? Well, of course we can because the square root and squaring something, those are inverse operations. So the answer is 1.3. And that's from using the images that were on the screen. The next one you had asked for, well actually the next three you had asked for, involved um, writing using a single radical. So 51, we have the square root of, and then we have the square root of 2x. Well raising something to the square root power would be raising something to the square root power, ignore that. Raising something to a rational power means that we're going to take the square root and we're going to change that into a fraction power. So that's really 2x to the 1 half, and we want the square root of that. Well, that's just square root one more time, which is a fraction power of 1 half one more time. And now we have a power being raised to a power and when that happens, we multiply. So that's going to be 2x to the 1 fourth power. Now, the problem came with radicals, which means what we want to do is generally put the answers back in radical form. So this would really be the fourth root, because the 1 fourth power is the fourth root. Remember the index, the denominator um, of that fraction is the index. So we really should write that as the fourth root of 2x when we get done. Number 53, similar problem. We have the fourth root of, but inside that radical, we have the square root of xy. And we know that the square root of xy is xy to the 1 half. And then the fourth root is going to be raising that to the one-fourth power. So now we have a power to a power, which means we multiply. So that'll be xy to the top times top, bottom times bottom, numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. And then what we do is, again, because this was given to us in radical form, we'll go ahead and make that the eighth root of xy for number 53. Now I know the instructions seemed kind of weird because they said write it with a single exponent, but again that last finishing step would be our realization that the problem came with radicals and we should put our answer in radical form. Now let's look at 55. 55 has the fifth root of a squared and the cubed root of a. And while I'm writing that down, I'm thinking, okay, if 5 is my index, that has to be my denominator. So this is a to the 2 fifths, and my denominator of 3 will make that a 1 third on the bottom. And now what I need to do is I need to subtract the exponents because we're dividing, and that means a common denominator. So what I'll have to do is look at the 3 and 5 and realize that 15 would be the common denominator. That means I need to multiply the top and the bottom of 2 fifths by 3, and I need to multiply the top and the bottom of the one-third by five. So that will give me a to the six-fifteenths over a to the five-fifteenths. And then, of course, the whole reason we did that was so that we could use the subtraction, and six-fifteenths minus five-fifteenths is one 
15th. And just like with the other problems, the problem came as a radical, so we should give it back as a radical. And like I said, the instructions are probably not the best here. It made you think that you were done um, when you had gotten to that step. And again, what we need to do is put it in the same form that the problem came to us in. We don't want to lose the fact that we were working with radicals as we go through the problem because the person who wrote it intended it to be a radical problem. All right, so now number 57 and number 59, different group of problems here, but this is just simplifying the exponential expression. So what that means is we want to put together any of those like terms that we possibly can't. We've got all kinds of A's in number 57. The problem is uh, that we're going to need some common denominators here. So for 57, we look at A to the 3 fifths and A to the 1 third. And then on the bottom, we have A to the 3 halves. And to make this easier, what I would think of is give me a least common denominator for all three of those numbers. And so the first one that comes to mind is 30. And you would hope that we would be able to have a smaller one than that. Uh, but that's really what we're going to have to use for that in order to make sure that everything is working. So 30 is our LCD. So my A to the 3 fifths and my A to the 1 third and A to the 3 halves will all need to be converted to 30ths. So this first one will need a 6 on the top and the bottom. The second one will need a 10, and the bottom one will need a 15. So this is really going to be a to the 18 thirtieths, remember it's top times top, bottom times bottom, and then a to the, we have 1 times 10, which is 10 thirtieths, which makes sense since that was 1 third, and then on the bottom we, had, we would have a to the 45 thirtieths. Now I can see everything that I have, and I know that when you multiply similar bases, you add the exponents. So what I do for my numerator is just add those two exponents together, and that will give me a to the 28 thirtieths over a to the 45 thirtieths. And now I know that when you divide, you are supposed to subtract exponents. So I need a to the 28 thirtieths minus 45 thirtieths. And if we take 28 minus 45, we're going to get a negative 17 thirtieths. And we know we can't very well leave that. So we have to put a 1 on the top and use that negative exponent as a reciprocal. And let me try and make that a little nicer to read. So we have 1 over a to the 17 thirtieths. And now this one did come with fraction powers, so that one we can leave. Again, it's, it's the original intent of the author of the problem, and in this case, they were working with radical expressions. All right, next one on your list is 59. And with 59, um, again, we're going to need a lot of common denominator action going on here. We have a to the 5 thirds, b to the 3 fourths, and then we have 3, a to the 1 third, b to the 5 fourths. So let's see if any of this is good news. Well, there's lots of good news because our a's are both already in thirds and our b's are already in fourths. So let's just pull them together. But while I'm at this, I'm thinking, you know what? There's already a restriction on this domain because fourth powers, it, that's telling me I'm going to have to take the fourth root. So b is going to have to be greater than or equal to zero if we're going to be able to do this problem. And I'm just thinking about that beforehand as I go into this. So now I have the three, and I have a to the five thirds, a to the one third, and I'm multiplying, which means I need to add the exponents, which is great because five thirds plus one third is six thirds, which is two. And then I go ahead and go after my b's, and I have b to the 3 fourths and b to the 5 fourths, which is b to the 8 fourths, which is b squared. So we have 3a squared b squared. And I am going to go ahead and list that restriction on the domain. Because we have to remember that even though you know, it looks just like powers to us, those fraction powers are to indicate radicals. So b will have to be greater than or equal 
to zero in order for that problem to be completed. And 61. Oh, lots of different ways to do this problem. All right, so let's see. If you are struggling with this one, um, let's do this. Let's go ahead and take the reciprocal of that y to the negative third so that we can move that up to the top and have negative 8 x to the 6 y to the third all to the 2 thirds power. And now let's just distribute that 2 thirds, so it'll be negative 8 to the 2 thirds, x to the 6 to the 2 thirds, and y to the third to the 2 thirds. So negative 8 to the 2 thirds, that's the cubed root of negative 8 squared. Well, the cubed root of negative 8 is negative 2, and negative 2 squared is 4. 6 times 2 thirds, you can either do some reducing or just think of it as 12 thirds. That's going to give you x to the fourth. And then y to the third, 3 times 2 thirds, the 3's would drop right out, and we would get y squared. So that's number 61. Now, I take a look and see, is there anything that I need to be concerned with here as far as the radicals go? And the answer is no, because this was a sixth power. Everything would work out to be positive. Negative three power, remember whether or not it's a root or not. If it's, if it's odd, it's not an issue. Same thing with our two thirds up there. That's odd, so not an issue. However, 63 has a lot of issues. So let's take a look at 63. Um, first things first, I would reverse these two. I would take the reciprocal to get rid of the negatives. So x to the 6, y squared, 1 half over x to the ninth, y to the 6, to the 1 third. So all I did was take the reciprocal uh, to move that around. And now is where it gets dangerous, because if we just treat this as if these were uh, fraction powers, then we're going to lose sight of what was really going on here, because this is the square root of x to the 6, y squared. And this is the cubed root <coughs> pardon me, of x to the 9th, y to the 6th. Now why is that important? Because up in my numerator there, I have the square root of x to the 6th. And what that tells me is I'm going to have to have um, a positive value come out of that. So I have the square root of x to the 6th, which would be x to the 3rd, and then the square root of y squared, which would be y. And then for my denominator, I would have x to the third y squared. And notice that what's going on here is that we have to take the cubed root and the square root and see what we have left. So now we have a problem. I look at this and I say, you know what? Those x cubes are going to drop right out. They're not even going to exist. This is going to be 1 over y. I can't do that. And the reason I can't do that is because when they wrote this problem, they intended for the x's to stay positive. So I can do some canceling, but I can't go that far because I have to let them know that they have to have a positive x in the numerator. <coughs> Pardon me. So I'm going to leave those two there to help them through that part. And that is all about the domain and the fact that our x's do have to come out positive as we go through that. And now I'm going to go back and focus on the y and see if it isn't the same type of thing. Well, it is because my y was intended to come out positive up here. That also needs an absolute value. Notice that it always comes down to what did the writer of the problem intend? And in this case, we had to have that positive y value. It doesn't matter whether or not you were looking up the top because we have the square root of y squared. If you put a negative 1 in here, it's going to be squared. And then you'll be able to take the square root. Down here on the bottom, if you put anything negative in there, it's going to come out positive, And then they'll be able to take that cubed root. So for both the x and the y, we have to keep track of that information as we go through the problem to keep the writer's intent. All right, simplify the radical expressions here. Take a little break there and have a little coughing fit. Let's look at 67. We have the fourth root of 3x to the eighth y squared, and that is over 8x squared. 
The first thing I would do is cancel out some of those x's. So that will be the fourth root of 3x to the sixth y squared over 8. Um, and that's because when we divide similar bases, we subtract the exponents. Next up, dealing with that 8 in the bottom. So let's separate this. And as I'm separating it, I'm thinking, hey, wait a minute. I don't really want to multiply by the fourth root of 8 to the third. I'm going to change that 8 to 2 to the third because that's what it is. And that way, I can just multiply by another 2, and I'll have what I need because then my denominator will be the fourth root of 2 to the fourth, which is just 2. So that'll be perfect. Now let's see what we have on the top. We have the fourth root of 6, x to the sixth, y squared. Well, let's go ahead and um, simplify that. The fourth root of 6 is not nice. Going to have to stay underneath the ugly symbol. 4 does go into 6 once, but with an ugly remainder of 2. And 4 will not go into 2 for the y squared. And then the next thing, the last thing we need to do is figure out, should we have any absolute value bars on this? And as we go back to the original problem, we can see, if anyone put a negative number in for these x's, the person who wrote this problem intended that to always come out positive, because then we could take the fourth root. So this right here, this x to the first, is going to need absolute value bars to maintain the fact that this problem would be able to be done. So whenever we have that even root that comes out in our answer as an odd power, we want to make sure that we have those absolute value bars. So there's 67. Then we have 69. And 69, both of those are cubed roots. So I'm just going to go ahead and multiply top times top, bottom times bottom, but don't want to lose my little 3 for the root there. So we have 8 x to the fourth over y to the third. And now let's go ahead and see what we have when we separate it. And a very nice thing happens. We get a y in our denominator, which is fabulous. But we have a little work left to do up there in the numerator. Well, the cubed root of 8 is 2, and we know that 3 does go into 4 once, but we have an ugly remainder of 1. So again, you treat the numbers as if we're talking about powers here. So the cubed root of 2 to the third would give you 2, because those are inverses. That would give you 2. But we have to treat those powers with our variables a little differently. And that what we do is just think of it as division. And, and it works the same as fraction powers, but think of it as division. So 3 does go into 4 once, but with an ugly remainder of 1. So that piece has to go back there. And then we go back to the original, and we see that this was all a cubed root, which is good news because then that means we don't have to bother ourselves with absolute value bars for any of that. 71. Right away, I see that the square root of 58, or square root of 48 is not simplified because 16 goes into that three times. And that makes me think right away, hey, 108, I wonder if that's divisible by 3. So we give it a shot, and we see, aha, that's 36. So 2 times the square root of 36 times the square root of 3. Well, this will be 3 times 4, square roots of 3. 2 times 6 square roots of 3, so 12 square roots of 3 minus 12 square roots of 3, which is 0. So 71, everything ends up dropping out, and we end up getting a 0. Then 73, 73 has the square root of x to the third minus the square root of 4xy squared. Well, there's a little index, of, imaginary index of 2 up here. 2 does go into 3 once, but with an ugly remainder of 1. And back here, we know the square root of 4 is 2, but we'd have a square root of x because we can't do anything with that. 1 won't go into, um, or 2 won't go into 1. 
2 does go into the y squared, so that'll be 2y square roots of x. So we really have x minus 2y square roots of x. And then it comes down to, should we put some absolute value bars in there? Well, let's see. Let's go back and take a peek. And at the original, our x's were odd, and so obviously somebody could have put negatives in there. So it must have already had the restriction that x had to be greater than or equal to 0. Now, it wouldn't certainly wouldn't hurt to put that in there, uh, but really the x's are going to be just fine without it. However, the y's will not because that was an even power that we saw in there. So we're going to need some absolute value bars around our little y value here to take care of that. So we have x minus 2, um, absolute value of y, and then all of that square root of x. And that should be all of your questions.